they're all starting out um, and getting the thing started didn't quite go to plan and there were several things to take from that uh, one was uh, and the first one because it's here was that um, with the choke being completely seized but I'll get on to that in a second the second one was that I noticed something with and going back and looking over the video and slowing it down uh, I noticed something with the ignition and the timing and the spark and all of those other things that just didn't seem to make sense to me and I'll be honest with you it's been 20 years since I last played around with these things so I was a little bit uh surprised to see what I saw what we got is this is an HIF 44 and you can you know with these because they've got a little uh, taggy thing there which will tell you what that actually is and what all of these do when you've got your inlet uh, I think that's a breather and I think that this is vac uh, breather from crankcase and so on and uh, there's uh, throttle and you've got your your thing um dash part these have got a very uh, specific sort of like a damper part that you've got there and and that's kind of how that sorts the throttle out and, and what have you but there's a lot of uh, corrosion and a lot of dirt the setup in this that we need to I, I figured that the best way to make sure that this isn't playing a part in the uh, issues you've got starting and running the car is to throw you know some genuine uh, parts of it. And I hope there's a diagram. There is a diagram in there. Brilliant. Right. Well, oh, I mean, come on. It's got a diagram. I mean, that's brilliant. I'm going to start stripping this down. And obviously, now, like I said, it's been a while since I've been anywhere near um, these. Uh, these fantastic pieces of equipment and like i said they're not particularly efficient they don't you know they they just work really well and i'm you know oh. we're going to take it all apart we're going to strip it down and we're going to chuck it in the uh, the, 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 no, the noisy cleaner uh, it looks as if with the car originally um or the uh, every bit of rubber on that car is rotten every single piece apart from the bits I expected to be rotten which was the fuel lines which would indicate to me that somebody has had a kick the cap previously <sighs> wow mm, that might take an impact um, I'm assuming that somebody has I believe the car somebody somebody dabbled with it in about 2014 they bought the car they dabbled with it in 2014. I'm not sure what ended up occurring as a result of that. And oh, it smells fantastic, this does. And um, it was then left to be, it was then stood for another nine years. And this is the end result. Like I said, these things, you know, because I, I had a, a mini, well, the, the Austin Powers, I parked that running in 2003. And I started it again around about 2017. Uh, after I'd done, I changed the head gap. I, as a, I stripped it to have a look at it anyway, um, just to make sure that the engine was. And I cleaned it all up, stick it all back together, and got the engine running before I pulled it. Um, just, that was the easiest thing to do, the easiest place to. Uh, so when I did that, um, and that had been stood. That many years, and that's pretty much just fired up the, um, a, uh, a a a a drop of fuel and a you know there, there was no admittedly it was dry stored uh, in a nice sort of you know however you don't always Mm-hmm. 
we've seen worse. I'm glad I got this done, man. I'm not a fan of using brake cleaner on these things because whilst it does work pretty well on a you know it's uh it's quite harsh and it doesn't do some stuff a lot of good. How the how do you get that one out of there? I've got no idea. So that pits in there, comes up. It's that one there. That's irrelevant. This is for that. I'm not entirely sure what the advantage is in removing that currently. Uh, TV never hurt anyone. <laughs> I'll be honest, carburetors are not. Because if you get, you, well, it looks as if it's been expert. Could have been factory, you don't know. So, this year is uh, what's left of uh, the dirt. And, So I've given that a bit of a blast off and a brush out and one thing or another. I think we're going to go for 100, 100. Because this stuff ain't cheap. It does work though. Well, yeah. You know what it's like. Right. That's 10 to 1. Right, well, there's definitely room for a bit more in there, isn't there? But obviously, this is gonna have to be done in two sections because it, it isn't, uh, and I've, I've looked into it, taking that bit off that, you know, everyone's probably said, you need to take that off. I think we need to add um, probably close to another leader. 
Right, that with the parts in there is about 1800 mil, so 1.8 litres. Go on. Right. Okay. Make the noise. Ah! Right, we've uh, we've got somewhere. It's looking a lot better, but that's just one pass. So we're gonna give this and this a go, swap it round a bit and what have you. Because that I'm gonna see what this is actually going, how well this actually works. I'm not gonna because uh, that is pure grot, petrol varnishy grot. That's just gonna go straight in there, and we're gonna give it another another whirl. Right, that's one pass on this. I'm going to give it another one. Because obviously it's not perfect, but significantly better. And if you think that, yeah, you could have got it there with anything else, well, you probably could have, but you couldn't have got into a lot of other places. Because the good thing about the ultrasonic is it's cleaning that effectively everywhere that's actually in contact with the water or the solution. So this one's going to get another pass. And I'm going to pull some of the other bits and pieces out of there first because I've got to be careful. This water is actually quite warm. Uh, I don't think that's going to get any better. Spring plunger. Yeah, that's, that two goes now. So there we go. Uh, there we go. Ooh. Ooh. I think that can have another go. What else we got? There, that's how much that's clean. Right, don't do this home. Right, so we're going to give uh, that and that another... Uh, I mean, look how much better that is. Yeah. Third pass. Second pass for this. Third pass, can't remember. Now, are you going to tell me that end was much, much better? It ain't going to get much cleaner. So... Pop you there. Now you... I think I'm going to need another pass. Yeah. I don't think it's going to get much cleaner because of the very nature of how it's, uh, how it's dirty. But uh, let me put you out there for a second because I inevitably forgot... Huh, I inevitably forgot two pieces, so they're all going back in. Um, well, much better. That's corrosion on there, that is. Right, that's been in... I've lost count, actually. Ah, that's warm. I don't think that that's going to get a lot better. Um, I don't think it needs to, to be honest. That's significantly better than it was. Significantly better. And without something like an acid... I don't think that's going to change a lot. I give it a brush. See what happens. Uh, what else have we got in there? Ooh. Well, that's loads better. It's not perfect. That's going to have another pass. So we'll do another pass and then we'll have a look at what we got. Ah, oh, so we've. Uh, Got all this out now, and I gotta be honest with you. You, you, sh if you can't see the difference in this, then yeah, I don't know what. There must be something wrong with your lamps. All the residue was gone. This, 
And the difference, I suppose, between this and manual cleaning, apart from the fact that it is easier, easier, is that what you're getting is stuff that you can't see and things that you can't see are getting cleaned as well because everything is getting cleaned to that. You know, and it, it, yes, we've got to put all this back together now, but diagram, parts, no bother, no bother. So what we got is, yeah, that's that, that's that. All those bits there. These bits, uh, we do need... Uh, Now this is to me this is good this is more than good enough because it, it restores something from being non functional it takes something from being non functional to functional. Yeah, right and all of that there the corrosion is something we're just gonna have to kind of deal with we'll grease everything going back in and oh that could do with a little bit of a a little bit of a clean Missed that for some reason. Alright. You've got all the other bits as well that are just. This isn't as bad as a. This is a lot more. Well, a lot less pokey and a lot less. There's less little holes to get into than there is in a Weber. And definitely the Delorto as well. It's not. Uh, uh, it's not anywhere near as. Uh, you know. We got all new seals. So, I like this isn't going to come off with anything. You know, I, I, I can. Uh, hang on a sec. Right, I just Dremel wire brushed that, and that is, it's it's corrosion. It's. Uh, it's not going anywhere and I'm not changing it so there'll be a new seal put on there and it'll return to functionality everything else is perfectly functional this is all going to be left to uh, um, dry off overnight and I will come back to this at the next available opportunity and reassemble So, everything is back as it was. We have got everything dry and clean and tidy and, yeah, well, I say it's clean and tidy. It's as clean as tidy as it's going to get without, you know, uh, sandblasting. It's got, uh, uh, it, it's got most of the stuff, you know, and you can be sure with the ultrasonic that it, it's got in everywhere that you wouldn't, uh, you know, um, I'm quite happy with my decision. Oh, I'll put that back on there for some reason. Uh, happy with my decision about uh, leaving this on there because there was no uh, reason really to take it off. Um, and I'm not seeing any... Uh, there are a couple of seals that we could replace, but they're not going to... Uh, I don't see any screws. Anyway, so this is where we find out that we had to, uh, as you can see, we've got a uh, uh, a kit, you know, and a diagram, which is great. So what we should be able to do now from this is put everything back together. I'm not sure if there's an order, you know, but put everything back together and put all the new bits in where you know make sure that it's uh, got a bit of life in it so uh, this is a genuine uh, genuine bit of kit yeah so uh, hopefully yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out
And then you. No, 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 no. Where's the other one? It must be a very. What? Oh, that's why it doesn't fit. It's already on there. Right, so that's that in there. And then we need. You going on? Oh, look at that. Oh, that did groove there. I forgot the spring. Oh! It's not immediately clear how this is supposed to work, but if I remember correctly, and you'll have to forgive me with this, because to say that I don't, you know, I, I've slept since I took this apart, and I could go back and look at the video, I might have to, but oh and this is this this it's got drawing blood written all over it oh my word oh, oh ha, 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 ha. right now if that goes has that got to go up under there i think it does how it right how it right are we looking oh good lord this has got some This has got eye out written all over it. Ugh. Ugh. But I said oh. what? it doesn't look right, does it? It doesn't look right. It's, uh... I'll have a fiddle with that because I'm not entirely uh it's all clapped out. Hey! No! Now that looks right. Right there. It feels alright. I'm not gonna do that up until I have to. Hmm, okay. The jet and bearing, and the which should be looks like the jet bearing. I've got nothing else in there that does. Yeah, that's the jet bearing. And that looks all right in there. I think that's all right. Yeah, that's definitely. And then that there goes in there. That is the jet lock nut. Bit that thing you're being an angle, it doesn't fit in that way. That fits in. Does that go? I think that goes. Hmm. Hey, uh, oh, oh, oh. right, jet, jet. Right, uh, it goes in there like this. Right, and it slides down in there, and that there should is it pivot on that. It must do. That's how it must work. Now I believe it is. This bad boy here. Look at the quality we got going on here. Ah, right, so that there should. So it kind of floats on there. Oh, is this too big? Yeah, that's it. So that there should be. Oh. 
Ah, there you go. So, float, jet, everything else. We got a choke. And that all seems to be there. So we're making progress here. Um, I just want to point out how good, right? How good, how much better is that? Huh? Right, so we take the old, uh, well, not the old, the new gasket. Oh, um, do you know what? I'm not going to use that grease. I don't like it. I'm going to use oh, my favourite grease ever. Because this stuff works fantastically as a grease. Uh, it doesn't do any damage to anything. And it, it, it re main reason for this is, is it's just going to stick. So we're not, uh, and it won't cause any problems with anything. And I've had this tube grease for nearly 20 years. And yes, you could almost say I don't use a lot of it, but you don't need a lot of it. It's, it's amazing stuff. And it doesn't cause any problems with rubber or because it's silicon county or silicon. So, yeah. You know. um, now, I think this can only go on one way. And that is that way because there's two little tabs there that won't allow it to go on any other. Beautiful. Ah. Onwards and upwards. Hey, next bit. Ah, fuel adjustment. What is this? Um, uh, what do Yanks call it? Fuel adjustment screw. Yeah, I'm not down with that. That is, to me, uh, that's a mixture screw, isn't it? Yeah, it's a mixture screw. Uh, let's just check here. 15. Mixture screw, right? And we need a new, I think we need a new seal. I said seal, not seals. Now, can you see? Uh, can you see what this does? So, I'm going to turn that in, right? And that drops that down. Now, that should enrich the mixture. So, all the way in is as rich as it gets. And then you can go all the way out. Hang on, I've done this. Right, all the way in there. Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so six there. So I'm going to go back it one. two three so that's halfway now the only reason i'm doing that is to make it a bit easier when you chuck it back on and it's sat there coughing and spluttering you haven't got you know it's in the middle what more do you want you know it can't be any more sort of uh you know so the next bit we're going to do is this bit so that needs to go there because you can see that that slot there has got a fit in with where the needle holds oh the the, the, the screw holds that in well, that seems awfully tight now that's a lot better right so now this should sort itself out apart from the fact this screwdriver might be a bit in the big side to be honest with you. yes there you go it's leveled itself out nicely okay so that's that taken care of. So that should be the dash part taken care of as well. go. OK. 
Okay, so we've got three of those. Now, you might be wondering why I'm turning it the wrong way to start with. And that's quite simple with aluminium, especially, uh, and plastic. You've got to be careful with these coarser threads. And it's good because what you're doing, I'm doing here is I'm finding the thread. There, see, that's it. It's lined up perfectly. So it reduces the risk of you cross threading significantly. It's a good little trick now. Right, so that should be on there. Have I forgotten to put the spring in? Yeah. Right, so. Oh, I'll tell you what. It's loads better. Right, um, so normally you dump a bit of the old uh, sauce in here, and this is called the damper pot. And I chuck a bit of that in there. Just like that. And this is mineral oil, this is. Uh, it's good stuff. No. What I'm going to do is find out. When you. Um, uh, the thread was a bit rough on you. Oh, there you go. The excess there. Currently, <laughs> running out of there, which it, you know it's fine. As far as I'm concerned, it's not. Uh, well, that's mineral oil. That is and normally use engine oil, whatever you're sticking in it. Because let's face it, the old uh, they're not. Uh, uh, I like to put these these paper gaskets. I do like to give them a bit of a, uh, a, a bit of a you know. A bit of a coating. Right, so that one definitely goes on there. Is that the inlet? That's the inlet there. This kit here is meant for uh, several different carburetors. Uh, twin? Yeah, who knows? Um, so it does. If four, six, forty-four, and thirty-eight, not necessarily in that order. Um, this, according to oh, the tag, the tag, the tag, the tag is uh, forty-four, um, and it is the correct carb for the twelve seven five. Uh, so yeah. Now, this, what this means is that we've got this all sorted. And like I said, the only thing that we didn't service or sort out was that throttle uh, linkage that's all in there and that throttle bar. And I'll be honest, even though those two, three, and there's a washer and two seals there, I, I couldn't see a problem with it. The, the, the main effort or the main point of the exercise was to clean it out and reseal as much as possible, which is what we've done. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is mission accomplished. That is a, uh, a, a clean and tidy and, you know, uh, we've got gaskets to go on when we stick it back in the car and that's all sorted out, hopefully. And it, there's a nicer, this is a lot better, this action for the, uh, uh, that's a load better. What I'll do is I'll find a link to something that somebody's done to show these running and how these work and how that actually does what it does there. Um, and that initial bit there isn't quite right. I think I've just not I've got the oil wrong or I've either that or me turning it up and down has made the oil leak out. So yeah, that's as clean as it's gonna be. It's gonna need some adjusting when it goes back in the car. But other than that, jobs are good and, and a big up for the ultrasonic cleaner, because that, you know, it, it does everything that it needs to do. It's a good bit of kit. It's all right, that.